Welcome to the channel, another episode of The Woo. Today I'm bringing you a review of the Nike Zoom X Vaporfly Next Percent 2. So this is the Nike Next Percent 2. Um, managed to get my hands on it, finally. I've been looking forward to this after I heard about the new changes from the Edition 1, which I have here. So those who already know about the Next Percent, you're probably already aware um, of the first edition, but if you're new to the Next Percent series, then I'll obviously give you a review of the Next Percent 2, but also compare it a little bit to the Next Percent 1s as well as we go along. So I picked these up at £209 with Nike. I normally go up a half size up because obviously I find the fit a little bit uh, narrow sometimes with Nike. So yeah, I went for 7.5 with these. So I don't think they fit true to size. Everyone's a little bit different, so be a little bit wary when you buy Nike shoes. So in my UK size 7.5, these weigh in at a very light 185 grams and that converts to about 6.5 ounce in weight one of the lightest out there the heel to toe drop offset is 8 mil and the midsole is same as the first edition which is a full length zoom x foam and you have a full length carbon fiber plate inside as well and this is the biggest news about the next percent two the whole new upper of the shoe so this review is really going to be looking at the upper and how the fit of the next percent two and how it compares to the next percent one let's go straight to the first fit feel and see how these felt when i first put them on the first thing i did notice it was um very rough to touch uh, very coarse not very soft not very um sleek so very different to the vapor weave which felt almost like a very shiny thin crinkly like plastic people used to refer to it as like the sort of plastic bag on your foot there was no creasing bunching uh, with the laces and it was much easier for me to fit lace up and get a nice comfortable lockdown with the vaporfly ones they were just very very difficult for me to get a, that sort of desired feeling when i put them on my foot there was a lot of relacing a lot of readjusting of the tongue which was extremely thin the vapor weave was extremely crinkly and bunched up so easily when you tighten the shoe with the new next percent twos lockdown was really nice the tongue is actually a little bit padded on sections to protect you from the tension of the the laces when it pushes down the asymmetrical lacing goes to one side as you can see there but it, it is very very similar in, to, in design but obviously the materials are very different uh, with the upper the laces are even different they've got these little little bumps on them I didn't really have any problem with the previous laces so I'm not sure if that's going to make a huge difference little bits of detail that Nike have added also there's this little um, it's like a reinforcement on the upper here and I think Nike have said it's to reinforce the high wear areas of the shoe but personally i don't think i've ever seen anyone with a picture or any problems with wear on this section of the upper so I'm not entirely sure why that's been added but it looks pretty cool so and it's not really gonna um be detrimental to any performance i'd imagine the heel still carries that um, padding inside with the sort of little cushion at the back so that pushes against the heel no problems there the shoe fit very nicely so far it felt pretty good and in terms of midsole when i first put them on nothing just changed from the next percent version one in the next percent twos the zoom x foam is notoriously light airy bouncy responsive almost like a you know trampoline feel but then you do obviously get the full length carbon fiber plate which is very very stiff uh, if you've not worn sort of carbon fiber plates before and you go straight into this one you will find it very very rigid personally for me every time i went into these next percent ones or next percent twos and i've not worn them for a while i did experience a little bit of pain on the outer foot uh, underneath uh, where the arch is uh, but that when you get used to it your foot sort of adjusts to that feeling of the stiffness of the plate 
and then that goes away. Exact same feeling in number ones and exact same feeling in number twos. Yeah, so that's the sort of summary of the first fit feel of the Next% Percent Twos. So I've spent one week testing this shoe since I got it. I've been doing the easy running, the tempo running, all the way up to interval running, the 5K and 10K pace running, long runs with easy. So I've, I've done enough to know exactly what I'm getting with this shoe. I didn't really need to do so much testing with the midsole. It was more about the general overall feel and fit and how the upper performed and the little changes from the next percent one to the two. So let's move on to the pros of the next percent two. So the first pro of the next percent two is obviously the upper everything about it has sort of been redesigned in terms of materials even though it's slightly ever so slightly heavier it's still so light and it's such a better upper than the next percent ones in my opinion um, it's still you know i wouldn't say it's the best upper it could be but in the context moving from next percent one to two i think it's a pro but in the overall landscape of of the sort of category of shoes you know something like the Sacconi dolphin pro i think that's a nicer upper so what really makes me a little bit cautious about the upper uh, is that i was watching a the Buri ram marathon in thailand actually recently a few weeks ago the guy who won was wearing these um, this exact model this exact color he um, bled in the shoe due to the friction because it was such a hot climate there there was the general buildup of the sweat inside the shoe he was also pouring cups of water from the stations over his head that was getting dripping down onto the shoe and actually it caused him to get that moisture in the fabric so i think it blistered and it bled so that's what I was worried about before when I was mentioning the coarseness of the material. Here it's not that hot uh, and I'm not going to try and emulate throwing water over my head and trying to get the shoe wet and run, you know, crazy pace for long and try and make my feet bleed. But I have done a long run and for me it was fine. Nothing, no problems with any of rubbing or anything like that. As the midsole has not changed from version one, you have to carry on the pro of the midsole performance from the next percent one because that obviously is one of the biggest things of why people buy this shoe if we're talking sheer performance i would say this is probably the best performing shoe that i've tried or owned in terms of the energy return and the propulsion you sort of get and the lightness all combines to be a super fast racing shoe same performance um which is really really good so obviously nike probably didn't have to change it and not changing it has not upset me in one bit now another pro of this and it's probably such a shock to hear but the next percent two got cheaper yes nike getting cheaper now that is something i would not have expected i expected these to come out and be more expensive but at least the same price at around 240 where it sits in the market, I think it's such a competitive price now. Nike have seen what's on the market now. You know, you've got things like the New Balance RC Elite 2, you've got the Socony Pros, and then you've got things like, you know, the Hoka Carbon X2, Adios Pro, and you've also got the A6 Meta Sky that has just come out in the past week or so. Uh, so there's a lot of competition now in this market. I think Nike wanting to sort of make sure they're still in that competitive uh, price range and not sort of price them out of the market. I think the price with this is just fantastic really. So the cons are really basically the crossover from the next percent ones and it's all to do with for me the unstableness of the shoe and it's still not the most comfortable shoe either uh, at slower speeds. When you're at high speeds it's you know really nice but when you're at slower speeds the shoe feels a little bit unstable i mean it has a very narrow arch as it is but then you combine that with the super softness of the zoom x foam and the rigid plate and it just feels a little bit like wobbly especially if you're on a little bit of an uneven surface uh, you might go on a little bit of gravel with some stones the zoom x foam is very very delicate as it were it will you know get sharp stones 
can just go straight through them. It's always been a topic of discussion, the durability of the Zoom X foam in the Next% Percent series. So to conclude the Next% Percent 2s, well, it's a formidable shoe if you're talking sheer performance. Is it the most comfortable shoe? No, it isn't. Is it the most stable shoe? No, it isn't. Is it the most versatile shoe? No, it isn't. But is it the performance beast that it aims to be? Yes, it is. Keep it to the smooth flat roads. Keep it to that sort of nice tempo, that, that pacey tempo where you land mid foot and it just feels like you're getting that really nice responsive return from the plate and the Zoom X foam just flies at that sort of pace for me anyway. Stability wise and comfort wise, I think when you're going for sheer performance, you do sacrifice that a little bit. So not a problem for me, it's not a deal breaker. When I'm going for the races, I'll not be thinking about uh, too much about that. I'll be wanting the performance that I know that I can get from these shoes. So that concludes my thoughts on the Next% Percent 2. And if you've liked this episode, as always, please like, share, and I'll see you next time on The Woo.